Hey, yo, man, this the podcast with soul. I said a stigmatism in my soul. So, yeah. So, what's up? What's up, y'all? Stigmatism, man, what's up? Good morning. Okay. What is it, man? Stigmatism. In, in my, my soul. soul. Okay. You got it, man? Do anything. Anything? Anything. You sure? Put your mind to it. Do anything. But what if it's hard, though, man? If it's hard, it's gonna be hard. What's up, y'all, man? I got to get myself together here. When I start my podcast, I got to I plug it in over on my other channel. I try to let everybody know that I'm live and get everything going. We're here, man. It's Saturday night, January 29th, 2022. Sean G, live in effect. This podcast is now. You can check my podcast out. It's available on Spotify. It's also available on uh, Google Podcasts, man. Yes. Yes. So make sure, um, you know, a lot of y'all told me, say, yo, Sean, man, I don't really like listening to it on YouTube in my car or in my truck or while I'm working because you got to keep hitting the skip ad for the commercials and stop what you're doing. So... Uh, we got it over on um, Spotify and Google Podcasts. I'm trying to work on Apple. I started the Apple Podcast. I got the Apple ID. I was trying to get it activated, but for some reason I couldn't do it. But I'm going to work on that once I feel like I, you know, I got to have the time and the energy. I got to really want to do that. I, uh, I ain't really... Want to do? I tried it the other night, but it took too long. So I said, "Man, I'm gonna do this another time." But we here. Follow me on Instagram at Sean G. Here's my Instagram link right there. Pin that message right there. All right, so you can follow me on the Instagram. Let me put the uh, the podcast. I mean, excuse me, the uh, Spotify joint up there too. Matter of fact, you know what I'm gonna do? Matter of fact, you know what I'm gonna do? Paste. Let me get rid of this. Make sure I'm under. Hold on, y'all. Let me switch back to my account. Sorry about this. Apologize. Make sure, sure I'm under. All right, so here we go. Now we good. So I got the Spotify. I'm going to pin the Spotify at the top. All right, so if you want to follow me on Spotify, you want to listen to the podcast on Spotify, um, download the Spotify app. And uh, yo, Ty, what up, man? I see you. Bulk of the artists in the building. Listen, man, um, just get right into it. I've been checking out. I'm new to this podcast thing, man. Um you know, since I got it over on the spot on the uh, the Spotify and the Google Podcast, I'm gonna kind of try to like limit my introductions. You know, when I was just doing it on YouTube, and you can visibly see me. You know, I can get into doing this and that and the other thing, but people don't want to listen to all of that. So, listen, what I what I want to get into, man, is that number one, man, you gotta believe in what you're doing. You gotta believe in you and you got to believe in your vision to me in my opinion that's that's number 1 um because without without you believing that you can do something what 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 do you have you know what do you have you you got to you got to believe and that belief is a mindset man and it's a mentality 
and and once you get the mentality, man, then it becomes a way of your language is what you say, the words that you speak, your actions, your mannerisms, and all of that, man. And that's pretty much all you need. That's pretty much all you need. And it's a decision that, you know, I have to come to on my own. This hat is hot. Y'all probably wondering, like, why am I sitting in this house with this hoodie and uh, and this hat on? It's cold outside. And in my room, there's a draft in my room. My room is colder than little Sean's room is warm. The rest of the house is warm. My room is cold. But anyway, it, it's a mindset and it's um it's 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 all in the mental, man. It's all in the mind. You know, you gotta believe, even in the darkest moments, man, even in your lowest points, even when you're at your lowest of your low. In order to get out of that. In order to come up from that and get relief, you got to believe. Now, you can stay down there and you can be messed up and uh, hurt and this and that and the other thing, but you're going to stay there if you persist in that train of thought. It's, you're not going to come up out of that train of thought until you start believing, right? And then you got to look around at other people. You got to look around at other human beings, and you got to see them doing what it is that you want to do. And you got to understand you, you. Well, I always make the connection. Let me keep it on me, man. You know, because I don't want to feel like, I don't want to sound like, you know, I'm teaching and, and um, you know, I'm talking down to you guys with this condescending attitude as if I'm know it all, because I ain't. I ain't. I make mistakes. And I'm imperfect and I'm just like you. But I have always been that if I saw somebody else doing something, that was all the confirmation that I needed in order to know that I can do it. I didn't need anything else. I didn't need anybody else to tell me or gold me on, yo, Sean, you could do this, Sean, you could do that. Once I saw another man doing it, and I made up my mind that, like, yo, I want to do that. And if I made the decision that that's what I was going to go for, that that was, that, 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 that was what I was going to pursue, just by me seeing somebody else doing it was enough. That was my belief. And I didn't care what color they were. I didn't care where they were from. I didn't care what they looked like. That didn't mean anything to me. You know, I've never allowed my race or my background or where I'm from or how I was raised to ever enter into my mind that Yo, because of this or because of that, you can't do that. I've never done that. I've never done that. Um, even, you know, and the more, the, 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 the older that I have grown, the more conviction that I have now in my older years um, that... I can I can do it. I can do it. You know, the older you get, the let me the older that I have gotten and the more experience at life that I have gotten, the more wisdom that I have gotten has all, all it does is make my confidence stronger and my belief greater. Because I got experience behind me, right? I've got mistakes behind me. I've got successes behind me. I've got experience behind me. I've got 
ups behind me. I've got downs behind me. I've got happiness and joy behind me. I've got depression and defeat behind me. I've got failure behind me. I've got achievement behind me, all these things. So all those things, what they did for me was just... Just get me ready. Um, nah, that's not what I wanted to say. It's just made me know that I can do it, right? Because as when I was a younger man, I, I dealt with a lot of self doubt. You know. Oh, man, I don't know. Can I do this? Can I do that? I don't know. Because you don't have any experience, right? You, you, you're a young man. You're in your 20s. The only thing you have behind you is your teens, right? Your childhood years. Years where you were... Make sure y'all hit the like button, man. You coming in here. It's 35 of y'all in here. I got 13 likes, man. Y'all got to stop that. You're in your 20s, all you have behind you is your teen years, and these were years where you were led by your parents or whoever else. You were greatly influenced. You know, you were grown. You were you were raised, and... You were taught, you were led, and, and you were uh, obedient, you were naive, impressionable, shapeable, malleable, right? So when you get in your 20s, you, that's the only reference point you got is somebody telling you what to do and whatever messages you received in those years, that's, that's going to dictate to a great degree how your 20s is going to be, Right? And then as you get older into your 30s, now you got your 20s and your teens behind you. So you got some more experience. You got some more seasoning. You get into your 40s. Now you got your 30s, your 20s hmm, behind you and all of those experiences. So... You're not as naive no more, right? You're not as gullible no more. You know what I'm saying? You're a little more cagey. You're a little more wise. A little more sagacious. More shrewd. And, you know, when you get in your 50s like me, I'm, you know, when you get all that experience behind you, And maybe just for me, I just know, I just know that I can, I can achieve and that I can do. You know, I never, I never, uh, I knew things would be difficult. I knew some things would be hard, but I never ever was like, yo, I can't do this. I can't do that. And um, I was just, um, I was reading, I was doing some reading before. And um, that that's what that's what um, that's what it talked about. I I read the book The Count of Monte Cristo by um, the guy that wrote the Three Musketeers. What's his name? Hmm. His name. Escapes me for the moment. But um, in this book, the, the, the Count of Monte Cristo, there's two central characters in there. There's a guy, Edmond Dantes. Who wrote the Three Musketeers? Alexander Dumas, Pretty Sweet Tomorrow. There you go. Thank you. Alexander Dumas wrote the Three Musketeers, and he wrote Count in Monte Cristo. 
And um, fascinating book, man. Changed me. Changed me. And it's about a guy who gets falsely accused of being, he gets falsely accused of treason and being a traitor. And he gets thrown in prison. He gets lied on by two guys. One guy wants his wife, well, who at the time was his girlfriend. He was getting ready to get married to her. One guy wanted his woman. And the other guy wanted his job. So they got together and they came up with this lie. And they wrote a letter to the lead prosecutor. This, the place is in France. And they told him that this guy met with Napoleon. This was after Napoleon was sent into exile. So they locked him up. They, they went to his wedding. He was at his wedding reception. He was getting ready to get married. And the police came in the middle of his wedding reception, arrested him, and threw him in prison, falsely accused him, and he got convicted and he got sent to this dungeon. And um, his father dies while he's in prison. The guy that wanted his girl ends up marrying her, and he's in this prison, the Chateau d'If, for 14 years, he's in this prison. And while he's in there, he meets this other inmate named Abby Faria. And Abby Faria changes his life. Because when Edmond Dantes gets thrown in prison, he's so depressed and distraught as to what has happened to him. He's cursing God. He doesn't, he, he's just, he wants to commit suicide and he's, he comes up with plans that he's going to deliberately start a fight with the guards when they come and feed him so they can beat him to death because of what has happened to him. Through no fault of his own, everything has been taken from him. His father, his girl, his job, his freedom, everything. And in the course of being in this prison, he runs into this other inmate, Abby Faria. And how he meets the Abby, the Abby... Dante's at this point is like 24, 25 years old. He's a young man. The Abbey is like 50. <laughs> the Abbey's like 50, right? So Dante's is in his cell one day. He's just sitting there. He's, he's been in there a few years by this point. And... He hears somebody knocking on the ground in his cell. He hears a noise. And he looks down at the ground. He's like, what, what the hell is this? And the Abbey goes away. The noise stops. He goes away. I don't want to go play by play. But a few days later, it happens again. And the Abbey... An abbey, because an abbey is a, uh, it's like a church person. It's like a, it's like a, uh, almost like a priest or a high ranking member in a church. He's been in prison so long that he, you know, he just, they didn't locked him up. He's been in there a long time. So he's trying to escape. He's crawling under the dirt, under the cells to try to find a way to escape out of the prison and get free. And he just so happens to pass by Dante's cell. So Dante's looks down. So they meet. And it changes Dante's life, right? Because 
this is the first human being he's met in a while. So they get together, and the Abbey is a wizard, man. He teaches him astronomy, geometry, five, six different languages, mathematics, chemistry, biology, philosophy. Every day when they wake up, either Dante's would crawl down. They, they, they made a tunnel from each other's cell. He would crawl through the tunnel to the Abbey cell and stay over there all day and learn, or either the Abbey would crawl under his and crawl into Dante's cell and teach him all day. And he, and he taught Dante's everything. And as much as he taught him, as much as he taught him, there would still be moments where Dante's would get down and depressed and like the reality was set in, like, yeah, I know all of this, you're teaching me all of this, but look at where we are, we're stuck here. And the Abbey would tell him, he say, Dante's, listen, you can't get depressed and you can't get down. You have to get rid of this because if you let this persist, if you constantly walk around in this depression, in these bad moods, these bad feelings, if you ever do manage to escape one day, you're not going to be strong enough to swim from this prison to land. Because the, the prison was out in the middle of the ocean, the middle of the bay, like Alcatraz. So if you escape, you would have to swim to the shore. It was like a mile or something. And he told me, so listen, man, you can't stay depressed because if you do manage to escape and you haven't kept up your strength, you would drown. And the strength was in his mind is what he was talking about. If you haven't kept up your mental strength and you do escape, you're going to drown. You're not even going to be able to make it to your freedom. And these were the things, the sciences of the mind that the Abbey taught him. And... The Abbey, while he was in prison, I need y'all to share this link. Hit that like button, man. I need 50 likes, man. I need 50 likes. Share this, share this on your Twitter, your Instagram, your Facebook, all of that. I'm going to put it on my Facebook. I know where I'm at. I left off at the Abbey. I left off at the Abbey. I know where I'm at. I know where I'm at, the Abbey. No locations. All right, we'll put that one. So the Abbey was rich. He was he was rich. He was rich. And every year, every time the guards came to feed him, he would always tell the guards, this was before Dante's even got there. He had been there years before Dante even got there. He say, look, man, let me out of here. Let me out of here. And when you let me out and give me my freedom, I'm going to give you a million dollars, man. I promise you my word. And he would tell every guard that, and they thought he was crazy. And they called him the crazy old man. Nonetheless, every time they came, he would tell them, yo, let me up out of here, man. I'm going to give you so many jewels and pearls and fine diamonds and precious stones. You're going to be rich forever. And they would say, you hear this crazy old man? And they never let him out. So after he meets Dante's,
and he teaches Dante's all of these things, languages, fighting, how to knife fight, how to sword fight, close combat fighting, astronomy, astrology, trigonometry, geometry, algebra, mathematics, the workings of the moon and the sun. He made a clock. He made a clock in his cell by drawing lines on the wall so when the sun would shine through his window, it would hit the wall. He could tell the time of the day it was from the sun and how it hit the wall in his cell by these lines he had drawn. This was the Abbey. Wizard. Genius. And he told Dante's one time, he says, the mechanisms of a watch can be broken, but that of the sun never can. Meaning that the sun's rising and setting can never break. And the day that it does break, this thing is over. So he teaches Dante's all these things. And eventually, the Abbey, he, he has these seizures, right? These seizures. He's got a medical condition where he has these, she, these seizures and he's, he's a chemist. He was a chemist. He taught him all chemistry and he had come up with this kind of wine. They had, because they used to let them eat wine, drink wine on Sundays and eat fish. And um, he, every time the Abbey would have a seizure, before he met Dante, he would administer this medicine to himself that he made, this, this home-cooked remedy, and it would snap him out of his seizures. So he was chilling with Dante's one day, teaching him, and he had a seizure. And Dante was like, oh, snap, what's up, man? And he told him, go get me that and pour that in my mouth. Dante's did it, poured it in his mouth. The Abbey snapped out of it, and he told him, so, yo, man, I have these seizures every once in a while. You know, I'm a sickly man. That's why I got to get out of here. And he taught Dante, if you ever see this happen to me, just pour this in my mouth. And the Abbey had dug all of these tunnels underneath the cells trying to get out of prison. The whole time he was there, he didn't languish and rue and just lament and just waddle in the mud like, yo, I'm in prison, I can't get out. This is my fate, this is it. Even in his 50s, homeboy would be under the cell. He'd dig a hole and he had dug all these, all these tunnels trying to get out of this prison, getting off this island. But the only thing he would just, he would be off in his measurement because he couldn't see... But he would try to use his mind to say, like, if I go this way 40 feet and then turn over six feet and then go diagonal three. But he never could get out. But that never stopped him from trying. He stayed trying. And that's how he ran into Dante's. He was under the ground trying to get out of there. And Dante's looked at this. Dante's, Dante's looked at this. He looked at this man. He looked at this man and he said, yo, this man... I'm half this man's age and I'm in my cell stuck like Chuck, mentally frozen, broken, spirit dark, spirit weak, focusing on how I got here and why am I here and me unjustifiably being here instead of getting out. And here's this man, 50-something years old, and every day he wakes up, he's under the ground Digging, trying to get out of here. So this, this lights a flame in Dante's. This lights a flame in him, man. Because he's looking at this dude like, yo, what's wrong with me, man? I'm half this man's age. This man going harder than me. So it, it pushes Dante's to go hard, right? So... The Abbey teaches him all this stuff. And then one day, the Abbey has a seizure and he dies. Dante's pours the stuff in his mouth. 
but the Abbey dies. Dante's is devastated. He is he is devastated because the one thing he that meant the most to him about the Abbey was the human interaction because he had been in prison for some years and these prisons they, these were solitary confinement. They there was no you know it might have been 10 people in this whole prison, right? In this 24-hour lockdown, there's no, you know what I'm saying? So had he had been in his cell for so many years by himself, the fact that he ran into another human being and was able to talk and listen and touch another person meant so much to him. And then when the, my man started teaching him everything, it really just lit his life up, right? So now the Abbey dies, He's 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 devastated. He's devastated. But before the Abbey dies, I'm telling y'all this whole story. You're not even gonna have to go get the book. Hit that like button, man. I need 50 likes. It's 50 of y'all in here. Put that like on 50 likes, man. Put that on 50 likes, man. It's 49 of y'all in. Here. Hit that like button. So Before the Abbey died, the Abbey told Dante about this treasure chest that he had buried before he got put in prison. The Abbey was really rich. He wasn't crazy. He was telling them guards, yo, let me out. I'm going to make you rich. But they thought he was crazy. But he really did have this treasure, yellow diamonds, blue diamonds, pearls, gems, precious stones, metals, gold, platinum, you name it. And he told Dante, he showed him the map. He had a map of where this treasure was hidden, where he hid the treasure before he got locked up. And if he ever escaped, he was going to go get his treasure and be rich. He showed Dante this map of where the treasure was, and it was on the island of Monte Cristo. Hit the like button, man. Hit the like button. So Dante saw the map. And after the Abbey showed him the map, he made Dante remember the map with his memory. It's either he did that or he only had half of the map and he drew the other half in the dirt or something like that, something scientific. Or either he showed Dante the map and he made Dante's, then they ripped the map up after he showed him the map. Or he gave Dante's half the map. He kept half and Dante's kept half, something like that. And they said that whichever one escapes, they're going to go get the treasure and they're going to go get the treasure, all right? And try to come and get the other one out. Buy the other one's freedom. So the Abbey dies in Dante's arm, in Dante's cell. So when the Abbey dies, a lot of the hope in Dante's dies, a lot of the love, this was a man he had grown to love, just like his father. You know, and Dante said that, sees, I, got, I love two men. One is the one that gave me life, and the one, the other one gave me wisdom. Talking about the Abbey. His father gave him life, the other man gave him wisdom. So Dante is sitting in his cell, man. The Abbey is dead. He done tried to pour all the stuff, the, 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 the concoction that the Abbey had made to reverse his seizure. It didn't work this time. The Abbey died. So Dante's 
takes the Abbey, because he died in Dante's cell, drags him in the tunnel, pulls the Abbey through the tunnel, both of them underground, and puts the Abbey in his bed, in his cell, jumps back underground, crawls back to his cell, and just in time before the guards come. So the guards come and they find that the Abbey is dead. I need 50 likes. Hit that like button, man. It's 55 of y'all in here. I need 50 likes. He finds that the Abbey is dead. Right? The guards find. The guards find that the Abbey is dead. Right? So they're like, oh, man, the old man died. They joking. Uh All right. So they prepare the old man to get thrown off the island into the water so the sharks can eat him. That's how they buried him. So the guards go. They get a, 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 a body bag. They put the Abbey into the body bag, and they lay him back on his bed. And they say when the next shift comes in, it's their responsibility to take this Abbey and throw him into the water so the fish can eat him. So Dante's is sitting there. He's devastated. And he hears them. He, he, he hears the guards talking about what they're going to do to the Abbey. So he's sitting there. He fucked up. Hurt, lonely, grieving, in pain, crying, lonely again, hopeless again, faithless again, no human being. He wants to die now. Again, he's back to that. Danny has an idea. Danny has an idea. I need 50 likes, man. Danny has an idea. Hit that like button. So Dante said, oh, snap. So he times it. The guards came in. The the new shift came on. They went. They looked at the Abbey. They said, okay, he's dead. Let's let's go count everybody else because they counted all the inmates. They went. They counted Dante's. And he knew they had been in prison so long. They knew the pattern of the guards down to a science the time the 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 sound of the way they walk the sounds of their voices they knew it cold so after they came to visit him and after they went and counted all the other people Dante's gets up out of his bed jumps down in the hole crawls to the abbey's cell Opens up the body bag, takes the Abbey out, drags the Abbey back down into the tunnel with him. He's dead. He's dragging the dead Abbey back to his cell. He gets to his cell. He puts the dead Abbey in his bed, in Dante's bed, covers him up like he's sleeping. He jumps down into the tunnel, crawls back to the Abbey's cell. And gets in the body bag and zips the body bag up. Dante is inside the body bag in the Abbey cell, in the Abbey's bed. The guards come back, they go into the Abbey cell. They pick up the body bag, and Dante's is in there. He's still, he, he, he's still, he, he's got to play the role of a dead man. He can't make no sound. If they drop him, nothing. He can't do nothing. But his mind power has gotten so strong from having been locked up that long that he could do it. So they take 
the Abbey's body bag, who they think is the Abbey, but it's really Dante's. They take him to the edge of the mountain, and they go one, two, rocking the back and forth, three, and they throw the body bag into the water. And while the body bag is falling down off the cliff, Dante's goes, ah, you know, because he's scared. He's in this bag. It's dark. They done threw him off. He don't know. So, boosh, he hits the water. He had a knife in his, he had a knife on him when he got in the body bag so he can cut himself out. So he hits the water. He cuts himself out of the body bag and he begins to swim for his freedom. He's out of prison. Now, Dante's was an expert swimmer because his job, he was a sailor. That's in the beginning of the book. So he knows how to swim. So to swim from the prison back to the shore, I don't know, it might have been like a couple miles, right? So he's swimming. He's swimming. He's swimming. He's getting tired. He's starting to drown. He's swimming. He's getting tired. He's starting to drown. And these pirates, these these robbers, these thieves, these pirates that go out and they rob ships, big cargo ships, these are some bad dudes. They're like a gang, right? They see him drowning. They fish him out of the water and save his life. These are killers. They go, they sail around. They had a little boat. They sail around. They see a big cargo ship like you see at the ports, and they go on the park cargo ship, they take over, and they steal all the stuff, and this is their hustle. They, 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 they ship jack, car jack, whatever. So they see Dante's drowning. They fish him out of the water. They save his life. So Dante's is free. He's free. And the Abbey not only gave him his spiritual and his mental freedom, but the Abbey also gave him his physical freedom. And the Abbey would have not wanted it no other way. The Abbey would have told him, Dante, if I die, you take my body out of the body bag because they're going to throw me off of here. You put me in your bed and you get in the body bag and you let them throw you off. So the Abbey, he used, the, the Abbey gave Dante all of his freedoms. Because I'm sure that when the guards went back to the cell in Dante's cell to feed him or to count him and he didn't move, they looked and saw that was the Abbey. They knew that Dante's was gone. So these pirates, they save his life. (sighs) And he eventually gets away from them and he remembers this map that the, that the Abbey told him about where this treasure was. So Dante's, it takes him about a year to where he can get away from these robbers and these thieves and these pirates to get to the island because he don't want to take them over there to find the treasure because they may take it from him. This is what they do. So he, he kind of ease off from them and they like, yo, where you going? He's like, ah, oh, man, I got something to take care of. You want us to come with you? Because they had become cool. He was like, nah, I'm good. I'm good. So he slips off and he goes to where the treasure is buried. And he remembers the map that the Abbey told him where the uh, treasure was. So it was like down in a cavern underneath this mountain. You had to swim down about 20 feet and then swim through a couple of dark caverns and, you know, lift up this thing and then the treasure would be there. And the first time Dante swam down to get it, he was an expert swimmer, held his breath. He couldn't find it. He went down there. He looked. He stayed down there a long time, about four minutes. Couldn't find it. He came back up got depressed. He said, man, was the Abbey lying or... 
Now, he knew he wasn't lying, but was the Abbey wrong? Was the map wrong? Did the Abbey give him the wrong directions? And he said to himself, he said, man, come on, man, come now. Be a man. We're used to adversity. We can't be crushed by a mere disappointment or else I'll have suffered from nothing. So what he was saying was, if, if, if he let the fact that he couldn't find this, this treasure this one time break him, then he did all that time and all of that for nothing. He suffered for nothing. So he waited, he got his breath, and he dove back down there. And he found it. He found the treasure. And man, he brought up just like a handful of it, man. And he sat on the beach, the little thing, and he just cried like, man, I can't believe it, man. And here it is once again, the Abbey impacting his life. So he goes down, he gets all of the treasure, and he's rich. Now, he hires these pirates, these bad dudes, this gang, to work for him. This is his, this is his muscle now. Now they his muscle. So he's super wealthy, right? He went to prison. He was like 23. He did 14 years. 15 years, so he's like about 37, 38 now. He's handsome, he's good looking, he's strong and fit from all the time he was doing in prison. He's been preserved, his skin, he looks beautiful, right? The, 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 his name is Dante's, but he changes his name to the Count of Monte Cristo, because that's where he found the gold, all the treasure, right? On the island of Monte Cristo, where the Abbey told him was. So he changes his name, to the, to the Count of Monte Cristo. Now he's got the money. Now he's got his robbing crew, his killers, his pirates, his muscle. Now this nigga wants some revenge on the dudes that lied on him and put him in prison, killed his father, and took his lady. He wants some revenge. So... Through his mind, he finds out everything, where everybody is, and he gets his revenge on everybody that did him wrong, from the prosecutor, because because when when he got charged and he went to trial the prosecutor knew that it was a lie and there was a piece of evidence that the prosecutor could have submitted to the court that would have exonerated Dante's and he never would have went to prison he could have married his wife he could have stayed a sailor he could have stayed in his father's life but the prosecutor took that piece of evidence and burned it So he went back, man. He got his revenge on Ferdinand, who took his old lady, Danglars, who took his job, the prosecutor, everybody, man, who did him wrong. And he went back and he got even. And um, amazing book, man. Amazing story. You know, but I tell that story because he, he, you know, there were so many instances in Dante's life after he got locked up to where he didn't believe, then he believed. Then his belief got knocked down. Then his belief came back. Then he met some adversity. Then he overcame it. And 
And when I read this book, I was in federal prison. I never will forget it. It changed my whole life. It changed my whole bed. It was a 1,245-page book. 1,245 pages, a 1,245-page book in little small writing. And I read this book in 19 days, man. I was so addicted to this book. I used to get up. I, w- I had got so into it. The, the whole book is so amazing. I would get up 2, 3 in the morning, all the lights would be off in the dorm, and I would go into the bathroom. The little light in the bathroom would be on. I would bring my chair in the bathroom and pop up against the sink and read the book in the dark. Yes, I did. And that story was a pivotal part of my bid in my life. And it just let me know that the adversity that we face depending upon how I respond to it can kill me or it can propel me higher. And just all of the lessons that he learned from the Abbey was just amazing. Like when the Abbey told him, says, Dante's, man, whenever he saw that Dante's was depressed and languid, he said, hey, man, you can't give way to this debility, man, because if you let, if you allow yourself to feel like that and you do manage, we do manage to get out of here and escape, you're going to drown because you're not going to be strong enough to swim. So what he was saying was that his mental attitude If he was in a depression, he wouldn't be physically strong enough to swim because his mind was already weak. But if that he was upbeat mentally, he would be able to swim further and longer and maybe make it because the mental game was propelling the body to be strong. It's deep, man. Deep, man. Deep. And... uh, You know, he met, you know, he, he never went back with his old lady. If you watch the, the movie, he goes back with his with his old lady. But on, in the book, he doesn't go back to his old lady. He, he just sails off into the sunset and he stays by himself. He had a slave. He had bought this female slave and the fe- his female slave fell in love with him, right? And everybody, no matter where he went, the Count of Monte Cristo, all of the women were in awe of him. All of the men held him in high esteem because he spoke Arabic, he spoke English, he spoke French, he spoke Spanish, he spoke Italian, he spoke whatever language he spoke it because him and the Abbey, the Abbey taught him that in prison, how to speak all these languages. And this in his mind was like a mental trap and his courage and his bravery, you know, was just on another level because the Abbey had taught him how to knife fight, sword fight, and all of that, man. And he just couldn't be broken. And all the other dudes just look at him like, man, this dude is like a god, man. And he was rich. It was a dope, dope story, man. You know? Um, so yeah, man, that's, you know, and, and that's why I picked today's topic, man. You know, you gotta believe, you gotta believe you just gotta believe, man. Right. And every time he believed, even when he started to fall short, you know, the universe was working in his favor. Like when he was swimming from the prison to land, he was getting ready to drown. He just swam so long. He was so tired. He was wet. He swam like a mile, almost two miles. And then it, I think he needed another mile to go. You know, just so happens these pirates fish him out of the water. They just happened to be swimming. They happened to be sailing right in the path of where he was. And they save his life. And then 
he ends, they end up working for him. And he uses these pirates and these killers to help him catch all the other dudes that did him wrong. It's an excellent book, man. Written by Alexander Dumas. Alexander Dumas, his father was a French man, a Caucasian man, European, and his mother was a black Haitian. So he was biracial. He was half French, half Haitian. Alexander Dumas. So he wrote The Three Musketeers and he wrote The Count of Monte Cristo. So I, that's it, man. That's it, man. So make sure y'all go and get my shirts, man. Make sure you get my shirts. Support the platform. Got that fed look. Got that Dante's, Edmund Dante's look, the Count of Monte Cristo look. And the Count of Monte Cristo used to say, you see it. You see it. Get your shirt, man. These shirts are $50. I hope you can afford it. I want to apologize to all of the people I was talking bad about the other day. I want to apologize to them if you guys are here. I was talking about welfare and food stamps and all that, man. I, I shouldn't have did that. That was wrong. So I want to apologize to you. But the shirts are $50. Uh, my books. You can get my books off the website as well. Stigmatism in my soul. I got some other books. I mean, excuse me, some other shirts. Uh, what else? You can follow me on Patreon. I put content over there too. And make sure you subscribe to this channel. Share this link. Um, Rudy Bell, what up, man? Yeah, it's a little similar to Shawshank Redemption. Absolutely. Absolutely. I can see great similarities with the Shawshank Redemption. You might even can say that the guy that wrote Shawshank Redemption probably took a big, the, the overall plot from the Count of Monte Cristo, you maybe could say. All right, y'all, so that's it, man. Anybody got any questions? I'll do a quick question and answer for you, man, if you got any questions. Make sure you follow me on... Uh... Make sure you follow me on Instagram at Gumby Publishing. That's up there at the top of the screen. Snowstorm here in Jersey today, man. It snowed probably about eight, nine inches. It's freezing out there today. So, listen, man. Shout out to everybody. I don't see nobody checking in with no questions. All right, man, let me, uh, Smith B, what up, man? Smith B40, what up? Oh, we did mention it in Shawshank Redemption? Yep, I wouldn't doubt that, because now that I think about the Shawshank Redemption, it's, it's very, very similar. Very similar. Yep, because he crawls through the tunnels and all that. Yep, yep, yep. Dope. Nah, nah, no Miami Conference this year, man. No Miami Conference this year. I got nothing planned. It's hard to do anything live nowadays with the fear and, uh, you know, everybody's all afraid and, you know, it's hard to... Plus, I don't have any money to do it, to tell you the truth. I'm broke. What's going on, y'all? 
Make sure you follow us. I'm going to upload this to Spotify as soon as I get off. And Google Podcasts, you can listen to this on my Spotify and Google Podcasts. I pinned the link at the top of the live chat. All right, y'all, let me uh, let me get out of here. I want to thank everybody for coming through. Thank you for hitting the like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to my other channel, uh, Sean G. I do a lot of calisthenics and health work over there. That's my bigger page. We're doing pretty good here. We should be hitting 5,000 subscribers pretty soon here. And um, I'll catch y'all another time. I don't know when I'm going to go live. I only do these podcasts like when I really feel something, man. I I try not to force nothing. Um, Google Podcasts, let me put that. Here's Google Podcasts. Let me see. All right, here's my Google Podcast. Let me put that link in the live too. Here's the Google Podcast link right there. No, it ain't. That was a Spotify. What happened? All right, here we go. This is the Google feed. All right, there's the Google and there's the Spotify. But if you go on Google or Spotify and type in the podcast with Soul, it should come up. It may not because I'm new to it, but the more people that go search for it, you know, when you search more for it, the name comes up a little quicker. Shout out to everybody. We did good. We had a total of how many? What's the most people we had in here tonight? The most we had was... uh, We got 60 likes. I think I saw 60 people in here one time, right? All right, y'all. I'll see y'all later. Peace. Yeah. Uh. Show what's up. Stigmatism. I said a stigmatism in my soul. Mm. Do anything. <laughs>